novels have been written about them, movies were inspired by them, countless women's hearts have been broken by them. Call them anything you want, Don Juans, Casanovas, or Gigolos. They prey on unsuspecting women to get them into the bedroom. But how do you recognize one when you meet him? The question is, like, is there more? So do I feel guilty? I'm a believer that people are responsible for their own feelings. Okay, as long as I present the facts clearly. So if she concocts something in her head about we're going to get married and the white picket fence, I'm not responsible for that. The men often justify their behavior. You know, they say, I'm really not hurting anybody. You know, if they misunderstood my intentions, that's their fault. But the truth is, the women on the other side, always a feeling of, you know, I've been taken advantage of. So can a Casanova ever commit? I think in the bedroom area, it's my belief that, that men thrive on variety. So Playboy would just issue the same issue again and again and again with the same girl, right, if that went the case. A lot of women who fall for somebody like Paul, not because out of free choice, but because they are vulnerable, they have had some childhood injuries, and he seems like the answer to their prayers, and these people do get hurt. I don't see anything wrong with sleeping with girls that I have no long-term interest in. I'm more selective about whom I have dinner with than whom I have sex with. I slept with uh, 130, 132 women. If I don't even take girls out. I meet them on the street and I invite them back to my place. If I'm attracted to the girl, the end game is to, to be physical. I want them in a controlled environment where I can escalate it into a, a sexual scenario. I generally know what my deal is up front. It's about the physicality, and I'm, I'm very touchy-feely right off the bat, so. Well, can I touch your cheekbone? Can we have a drink sometime? You'll bring the accent, I'll bring the cocktails. Sure. Boom. I'm nice Paul. To meet you. Big hug. The big key there is to, to enter with confidence keep it light and playful, get the contact information, and then get out of the situation. And you said she may look fit, sexy, and sophisticated, but after she's naked with mascara running down her face and she's trying to stuff her thighs into a pair of two small jeans at 2 a.m., you realize she's just another person trying to get by. What exactly is offensive about that? I'm, I'm, in, that in that statement, I'm basically saying men and women are equal. We're, we're all just trying to get by in this world. And don't, as a man who's trying to learn a little game, don't put a woman on a pedestal and think she's untouchable. I think a lot of men's uh, insecurity is that they elevate the woman so much that they have fear of approach. Today I am rocking my player blockers. You know how they have hater blockers? These are my player blockers. Because we're blocking players all 2024 and 2025 and so on and so forth. <laughs> All jokes aside, I wanted to have a little fun with today's video because it is a pretty serious topic, as fun as we're going to be about it. Because listen, people underestimate the impact that heartbreak and getting played and players just using tactics on you, just what it does. But it really can change the whole makeup, the essence, the aura of who a person is to get played. A lot of people go around just playing people, breaking hearts, and they're not understanding just the depths of the cuts that they're causing, you know, to the people. And you're changing them, making them a little bit more bitter, a little bit more closed off, less vulnerable, hurt. People have even taken their lives from heartbreak or realizing that they spent years, you know, pursuing someone that just wanted to play them, keep them around, etc. This goes really deep. And even in the Bible, God cares for our hearts so much, which is why I'm going to leave that part for the very end. How in the Bible, he has his stipulations on how we should even go about this to prevent some of these things. And in recent times, you know, if you're dating, you're putting yourself out there. I didn't realize it was that bad out here, but it's bad. It's bad out here. It's bad out here, especially if you want to do things the right way and you're having a pure heart and you know, you know, but I got you. This is going to be your guide because y'all know the biggest players are in the Caribbean. <laughs> Jamaicans and Haitians that's just where it is so <laughs> we're gonna use them as case studies also people that I've spoken to that I'm gonna give you all the real tea on the signs that the ways that you get tricked and played manipulated to just get into your panties or to waste your time and not really serious about you we're gonna get into all that and more but first hey friend welcome to my channel Kareen Alun Mental Gems this channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life so let us learn together read together but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Gentlemen, the next right, let's go over this one more time. What is the objective? The shock and awe. That was shockingly awful. What is the objective? Shock and awe. So get to where it's loudest. Ask her if she'd like a drink. Lean in, place your hand on the small of her back, and say it in her ear like a secret. But watch your hand placement. Too high, says I just want to be friends. Too low, says I just want to grab some ass. And all is said and done. The night is not about Allegra. Oh, no, tonight is about Maggie. A woman's best friend has to sign off on all big relationship decisions. So you can't afford to mess this up. That's what most guys do. They rush in to take the kiss. But you're not most guys. See, the secret to a kiss is to go 90% of the way and then hold for her to come the other 10. Okay, 90-10. Got it. Yeah. 
number one thing that they do is they like to do this thing called negging. Now you're like, Kareen, what is negging? According to Psych Central, negging is a very sim is very similar to the covert put down or backhanded compliment used by narcissists. A neg is a comment meant to undermine a person's self confidence so that they are more vulnerable to advance from the perpetrator. In the pickup artist community, negs are used especially when a target is perceived to be more attractive or appealing than the pickup artist. It allows the pickup artist to bring down the target a notch or two so that the victim feels compelled to win the predator's approval or validation. For example, a male pickup artist may neg a highly attractive woman by saying something like, if you're lucky, I may even buy you a drink. In this scenario, they know this woman is used to men fawning over her, so they neg her in hopes that she will think he's different and strive to seek his approval. While negging certainly doesn't work on everyone, there has been research that indicates that women who have their self-esteem temporarily lowered tend to find a male stranger who approaches them more attractive. Both men and women with lowered self-esteem also tend to be compliant and agreeable to the requests of others. Negging can be dangerous if you're not aware you're being negged. Researchers believe that if you feel flawed or defective yourself or already struggle with your self-esteem, you're likely to expect less from a potential partner and have a heightened need for acceptance and affection. Those with trauma histories or prior relationships with narcissists should always be aware if they are met with these type of comments and resist internalizing them. So let's talk about negging, especially if you are a woman that got your stuff together, you look good you make your money all this and I realize a lot of men will try to humble you in the sense make you seem like you're not really all that in a bag of chips or you're not the catch you're not all that all the stuff you have going on I could be get better you're not a once in a lifetime girl for them okay and I believe in humility we there is always someone that's better than you. That's just the facts of life. And even when you're dating a guy who you think is all that in a bag of chips, there is someone that's always going to be better than him. That's just the cycle of life, so on and so on and so forth. But for you, you have to know for you that you're valuable, that, hey, I have a lot to offer. I would make anyone a great wife like you know the right person I will make a great wife I am gorgeous I am intelligent well spoken I take care of my own I take care of myself you look the part you have to say that to yourself even if you're a guy because women do this too it's not it's gender neutral really um negging and manipulating and playing with people's hearts it's gender neutral so even for a guy you have to when a woman tries to humble you too because women do this too you have to already know your value in your your worth because the number one way negging works on you is if you're already insecure and you don't know your value and your worth so you gotta hype yourself up i always say if you're still struggling with insecurities you don't feel like you're all that i would halt on dating i would just halt on dating because you tend to settle more when you're insecure when you're insecure negging works on you because you already you need their validation you want them to you know but if you're already securing yourself you already know you're all that this stuff is not going to hurt you as bad in dating i've learned that you know when i'm having my insecure moments it's not the right time to talk to anybody if i'm still working on myself i'm working on my fitness my skincare whatever i'm not feeling like <sighs> just yet like you know you got the sauce just yet I don't think it's the right time because you'll find yourself in situations wait how did I let that happen like the example of if you're lucky I'll do this or you know I'm the catch I'm gonna make you <sighs> listen ladies you have to always know specifically for ladies because this happens on a grander scale to women is you really have to know your value you really have to know your value and don't let a guy diminish that make you feel worthless and another way is negging works is if they try to show you and especially in the early beginning stage you did nothing to him you're showing interest you like him back like so many guys have lost out on their opportunities with a wonderful woman because they want to show that they're so unavailable in the terms like they're not responding super quick they're not you know showering you with compliments or attention they're showing you they're not ready for commitment or that kind of stuff being distant and all that and i'm telling you that listen there will always be others lined up when you're dealing with a confident woman okay and when you're confident and a guy is showing you that move on sis move on move on there's so many i don't like to use that term like fish in the sea but literally there's so many fish in 
in the seat and there's somebody for everybody. Don't ever feel like what you're asking for is too much that you have to settle. You have to settle for, you know, weird interests. Like you're not giving it all in. Like if you want the flowers, you want the romance, you want the sparks, you want the fireworks, you want going out of your way to be in my presence, to talk to me. If you want that, somebody out there is willing to give that to you if someone else is not. Don't be stuck on nobody. And then once you remove that rose colored filtered from your lens, you're going to look like I was tripping over this. There's so much better fish in the sea. Okay. Don't fall for the negging, the put down, the humble tactics, trying to humble you and try to make you feel like, you know, it, you ain't all that. Don't do that. So the next is manufacturing love triangles and harems. Let me show you. Narcissists do this as one of their primary tactics in relationships. It is known as a triangulation and harem building. They will often make themselves look like they are highly sought after or have many options. They manufacture love triangles by constantly bringing up their exes, people they've dated, or people who are apparently obsessed with them. They may indulge in stories about how people throw themselves at them or are being hit on excessively. They may do this all while throwing on an air of loyalty and devotion to you to make you feel special, even while putting you on edge and making you feel off balance and uncertain. If you find that on a date, someone talks at length about their former partners or those they find attractive or that they flirt with others such as the waitress or whatever, consider this a major red flag. These are automatic deal breakers because such tactics are used to dismantle and unsettle you. Break the triangle by removing yourself out of the equation altogether. A healthy partner will strive to make you feel cherished and secure. An unhealthy one will manufacture and feed insecurities. You never have to compete for a worthy partner's attention, right? I don't even believe in talking about exes in your past, like right off the bat. That's crazy. In the first couple of weeks you're dating, let alone you on the first date. I could already pick up the tactics is that you're showing me, you're trying to show me all the women in the past that were obsessed with you or, you know, this and that. Like it just, you cannot fall for stuff like that. Or if they try to make you compete, they try to make you compete with other women by talking about their celebrity crushes. Guys do that too. Or crushes like Instagram influencer crushes or other women and try to hype them up and show you oh this girl wanted to talk to me too or even try to show your friends that I used to like them or things or they thought like them and stuff those are all tactics to get you to feel like oh my goodness he's so special he has so many people that want him let me try to bag him don't even do that don't even fall for that don't even fall that vice versa women do the same thing you know you have to it has to be I'm not saying if a person asks, like you're having a natural conversation and they ask like, hey, what happened to your last relationship? Why did you guys break up or stuff? I'm not saying to ignore and dodge so you don't appear like that. Or if they know of a situation in the past, like I've talked to people and they know of a situation in the past, someone I talked to that they might have known about or something like that, where they might have a question. They might want to know what happened with that situation. I didn't quite understand it. Go ahead, explain the situation. But when it's done maliciously is that you're bringing it up to make the person you're talking to feel insecure, like they don't measure up or to make you seem like you're more... Um, wanted or needed or obsessed about than usual don't fall for it next is the seven hour rule which is disclosure and premature intimacy narcissist individuals know that getting a victim to trust them and feel comfortable around them is crucial to getting them invested and vulnerable narcissists know how to do this in spades at the beginning of a relationship they assess their victims vulnerabilities and morph into what they may be missing from their lives the in the honeymoon stage of the relationship they spend a lot of time grooming their victims pickup artists and narcissists alike use excessive amount of time paired with early disclosure of personal details to manufacture a small sense of intimacy which does not exist yet. Such as methods has actually been scientifically proven to be effective. Narcissists use this technique to learn about their victim's weak spot. If you're on a first date with one player or pickup artist for example you may find them prolonging the date and telling you seemingly romantic things like I don't want this night to end do you or pushing you to make a second date before you've even finished your first. This is a strategic move to heighten a level of investment and increase trust and the victim. It is advised in the PUA community that such time be spent getting to know the target, disclosing things about yourself, and getting the target to disclose about themselves, with topics becoming more and more intimate. That way, the target comes to perceive you as a potential sexual romantic partner early on. So to enter contract this method resist disclosing personal details when a date reveals intimate information so prematurely remember that anything and everything you tell a narcissist individual or pickup artist can and will be used against you listen when you're on a date 
I always have the rule. If you're on a dinner date, okay, the time the waitress come, whatever, try to limit it to no more than two to three hours. Don't try to stay four to five. There's a guy I was watching on YouTube actually um, in research for this video. And, you know, speaking to my guy friends too, they agreed. They said, this is the truth. This is the truth. But he, the guy basically gave his story in the, in the past when he used to pick up girls and do stuff that he'll go with them and he'll try to prolong the date with the girl as long as possible that he wants to lay in bed with like, oh, I don't want this to end the same exact tactics and then start being vulnerable about his past hurts and break a people, broke his heart, how he's not ready for a relationship. He's so hurt. He's so this, right? And then the girl would be feeling like, oh my goodness, he's feeling so vulnerable. He's opening up to me. I'm so confused, you know, maybe you know you know she starts to let her guards down but then as they're talking they're getting more and more touchy like whether it's the hand whether it's you know as they're being vulnerable looking into your eyes etc and trying to keep you there as long as possible because they know the more quality time the longer they're around you and then they're in initiating touch you're more comfortable you're going to let your guard down i want to tell you a story it's not going to make me look good i was single I was insecure, just like every other human. Um, things made me feel weird. Let me give you the perfect example. When I was in my mid-30s, I'd just come out of a broken engagement with a fiancé. And I moved in with my parents. Uh, you know, so I was single, moved in with my parents, had a business that was doing okay-ish. So I basically was insecure that I was living with my parents, insecure that I wasn't married in my mid-30s, insecure that I wasn't making enough money. And so all of that made me well, what am I going to present on a date? So fast forward, let's call it four years. And now I've moved to California and I'm dating. And I realized that story could be used as a strength and it could get me things. And what I mean is it could get women to like me because it would allow me to show off vulnerability. The first date, when we got there, we were spending, you know, we had a few drinks, I believe. And we got to maybe two hours into the date, which is not something I would suggest doing. But all of this was part of a subconscious formula I knew that would make a woman connect with me. If I increase the amount of time with her during the date, she's going to start feeling more connected to me. And frankly, she's going to lose some of her capacity to say no. And she's going to increase how connected she's feeling to me over, you know, multiple hours. So by the time we get to three, four hours into a date, she's almost feeling drunk, if you will, emotionally drunk from the fact that there's been no downtime. She didn't get a rest from us. And she's doing a lot of talking and connecting with me. Now, on top of the emotionally drunk, you then bring in some vulnerability, which is me telling her about a broken engagement and going into, you know, the things I needed to work on, how I was a people pleaser and how I had bad boundaries and I didn't stand up for myself. And now she's really feeling connected. She's like, wow, this guy's being vulnerable. He's capable of emotions. And then what happened? I even fooled myself. And I thought I was connected to this person. And at this point in my life, I was very superficial. We slept together. But while we were sleeping together, my brain was actually working. And my superficiality said that her body was not nice enough for the caliber that I expect to be in partnership with. And this is disgusting that I'm saying this, looking back on it now. But it's honest. That's how my brain worked then and so fast forward to seeing each other more i valued women based on how they looked how their body was and i thought i being a high caliber man deserved a certain look and at that time that's what i valued so now this poor woman who felt very connected to me just got rejected because i was a superficial asshole and I was, I am a human that tries to be good. It's just I hadn't reprogrammed myself at that time to realize that when you're looking for partnership, how a woman's body looks is not that important in the grand scheme of things. What's more important is can you hold a conversation? Will she be nice to you? Is she a good human? Is she smart? Are you enjoying conversation? Can you have fun together? Do you have some things in common? How does it feel? Does it feel nice to talk to her? Does it feel nice when you're in between dates? So I was doing it all wrong. Because there's guys just like me, or, or old me, who are really capable of being charming. And have kind of figured out a formula 
on how to connect with a woman and how they can almost trick you into feeling connected, feeling safe to go to bed. So just be careful. What I want you to have in your toolbox is simply not getting yourself to emotional drunkness on a date, which is being there too long. I know for a fact that, you know, once you're getting over two hour long dates, you're going to feel a little connected to this person if they're charming and you're having fun. So don't have dates longer than an hour and a half. And make the guy keep going on dates with you. If this woman ended that date in an hour and a half, and then we went on a second, third, and maybe we wouldn't go any longer. Eventually, even where I was at then, I would have been looking around and been like, this isn't it for me. You know, maybe she's not the attractiveness that I want at that time. So eventually I would have stopped asking her out and the heartbreak would have been avoided. So what I want for you is go slow and see if a guy keeps showing up for you. Because a guy who's really into you is going to keep showing up. And the guy that just wants to get laid or wants to manipulate or wants to play a game, eventually the woman he can't manipulate is the woman he's going to stop calling because it's not worth his time. He can't get the outcome he wants. I want you to make it a little challenging, if you will, for him. Because the right guy is not going to be a challenge. He's just going to love it. He's going to be like, wow, I get to keep spending time with this woman who's so phenomenal and I'm having such a great time. And that man that's really looking for partnership and has healed his stuff, he's not playing a game. He's not manipulating. He just wants to get to know you. It's the guys that are unhealed, that have trauma, that want to win a game so that they feel good about themselves. And they're going to look just like every other guy. And you're not going to know. So time gives you access to that knowledge. Because I assure you, there's some great guys out there that you're never going to know until you're in pain. And I don't want that for you. And then also, they want you to talk about your past hurts. They're asking private, intimate questions to get to know you, to do like an analysis on you, to know your weak points and your targets, like asking you about past relationships. What do you and do you like and you don't like? So they can morph into exactly what I, I'd say never tell or lay it out there and tell a guy exactly what you like, what you want. Don't make that mistake. I used to make that mistake all the time and say, lay it out there exactly what I want, the type of guy I want, whatever. And they will morph into that and some of them will do will go through great lengths to do that just you know keep it easy keep the conversation light for a little bit and try to avoid intimate conversations at all costs if the person has not please look to me in my eyeballs listen this is tough experience i'm telling you right now if the person has not made it clear that they are committed to you they want a committed relationship with you and that they are serious with you please do not indulge in intimate sexual conversations do not indulge but those jokes turn into actions do not indulge change the conversations or let it be known that you're not comfortable and if you see a guy is going to that intimate part too quickly without even making it clear that, hey, this is my intentions with you, know that that's a red flag. That's a red flag. No matter how much he tries to show you, he's not like that. I'm not a player. I'm a man of God. I'm this and that, whatever. Then say, hey, this this is not conducive. This conversation is not conducive to a conversation a man of God would want to be. And if they're talking about touching you, initiating touch or intimate um, settings or intimate touch, you say, how can you not be ready for a relationship, but you're so ready to be intimate and touch me? Like, no. And some guys will lie and tell you what you want to hear just to get that, which is why I say don't rush the process. Don't rush the process of getting close, kissing, holding hands, all of that. No. Go on a couple dates first. I say at least go to three to four dates first and talk for a little bit before you get to that because some people will tell you exactly what you want to hear. And I'm telling you guys, this is from a horse's mouth that they will do that. And they will show you that they want a relationship to keep you around. Some guys be bored and lonely too. They're not ready for a relationship, but you're a pretty girl. You you look cute and you know, whatever. I could keep her around for a little bit and they want to use you. 
Don't do it. Four is emotional anchoring and seduction withdrawal. Both pickup artists and psychopaths love to engage in what is known as emotional anchoring to better influence and control you. Anchoring is a neurolinguistic program term used to describe the process in which an internal response becomes associated with an external or internal trigger. The anchors can be anything such as specific gestures, a certain tone of voice, a scent, a physical movement, or touch on a specific part of your body, a certain location, a song, a word, anything you can think of is fair game. The most effective anchors are ones that are unique so that they aren't indiscriminately triggered, repeated to be associated with a specific emotional state and are conditioned during times of peak emotional intensity. Narcissists use general emotional anchoring and conditioning throughout the abuse cycles to associate pain and pleasure. Pickup artists primarily use emotional anchors to retrieve and, and make you associate pleasurable states with them. However, both types can engage in seduction, withdrawal, hot and cold behavior to create compulsive chasing and behaviors in their victims. Simply put, anchoring is part of the overall conditioning that makes you addicted to a predator. Pickup artists use seduction withdrawal methods to anchor themselves as important in their victim's mind. A pickup artist may pair a blissful date with a moment of coldness to create a sense of pain, pleasure, fear, and excitement simultaneously in his or her target, knowing that all these emotions are associated with the biochemical addiction involved in love. If his target fears losing his attention, she might work harder to regain it. Mm. Narcissists engage in hot and cold behavior to provoke their victims into chasing them and to reinforce their sense of power and control over their victims. They may put you on a pedestal one moment only to distance themselves abruptly or compare you unfavorably to someone else the next. If you notice that someone you're dating engages in abrupt hot and cold behavior, withdraw yourself from the relationship. This person will never give you the type of consistency you're looking for. Narcissists engage in what is known as love bombing to create heightened emotional anchors. They shower their targets with excessive praise, flattery, and attention in order to make their victims dependent. Pickup artists can use emotional anchoring in specific ways to sexually escalate. They may condition you to associate certain environments, situations, or moods with them. This can be done through grand gestures or subtle moments. For example, a narcissist pickup artist might have a habit of spontaneously kissing you in the middle of a public place, whether in a fancy restaurant or in the middle of the street, so that you associate those specific locations with them, as well as a mood of romance with being with them. These are memories they are purposely implanting so that what, whenever you pass by that location or watch a romantic film with those same scenarios, you remember them. Pickup artists may also add on physical anchoring as a way to make their targets associate their touch, voice, gestures, or sense with positive memories and emotional states. For example, a woman might wear a certain delicious smelling perfume that her date comes to associate her with whenever he comes across a similar scent. Or a man might speak in a deeper voice whenever he's speaking about something sexual to get a woman to feel aroused, even when he's speaking about innocuous things in the same type of voice. Beware of anchors. Whew, y'all see how crazy that is i have no words <laughs> i have no words i gotta put my player blockers on Woo. i have no words i have no words i have no words, have no words. guys guys <laughs> all jokes aside um this is crazy because wow wow Wow. It's like the more you learn, you can learn um, like in past mistakes you made when you were younger. You can clearly see like if you've ever asked yourself, how did I fall for such and such manipulative tactic or ended up in this situation or stayed stuck in a situation? Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's like you're addicted to the person. One thing that do with the hot and cold situation, it's like they're giving you attention, touching you, talking to you. And one minute they just withdraw and then go to the someone else in the room or go talk to someone else in the room. And you're sitting there like, why is he not giving me his all undivided attention? Or why is she not, you know, I'm not the most important person in the room to her, right? Because women do it too. So it goes in that way that you start to do it. There's people that are opposite. I don't know. Maybe I'm toxic in that degree still. And there's a lot of healing I need to do with that. But if I see you withdraw from me, I'm withdrawing for you. No, because no. No, <laughs> you have to chase me back because, you know, but I think the worst thing you can do is to try to get locked into that game system of now you're becoming hot and cold, hot and cold, too. Don't get trapped into that game of, you know, becoming hot and cold, hot and cold. Don't don't get trapped into it of like, OK, he withdraws, I withdraw. He shows attention, I show attention. If someone keeps removing their attention from you and you can tell it's that hot and cold game just remove yourself from like trust me i know 
the game, the chase, the hunt is exciting. And it's exciting for women too. I hate that um, when dating, comment below. I want to see, I'm, I actually, I'm very curious to see. So please comment below. Do women, if you're a woman, do you find the chase and the hunt exciting too? Because I know it's attached to the masculine and you're supposed to be chased. It's he who finds a wife, finds a good thing. There's some women that really finds it exciting to seduce and to participate in the hunt and the chase. But subtly, I'm not talking about aggressively, let me take you out or I you know, love you to a guy. I'm not talking about in that manner. But to be seductive, to be enticing, to, you know, reel somebody in, to be that woman. There's some women that really love that chase you know so it is addictive and when a guy is hot and cold with them it excites them because now they get to play too they get to be hot and cold too <laughs> is that toxic definitely toxic but i know there's there's women out there it's like this like comment below comment below so for them it's just as exciting and it's exciting for the man too and for them when they know a guy is on the fence with them they like the competition they like to feel like okay who am i competing with what what girl what girl is oh that too okay bet and it's game on right it's very toxic but i tell you in my limited years on earth that i have lived i have learned that it's always best to just remove yourself from a situation like that than try to do the competition and the chasing back you're always going to be the one left hurt you're always going to be the one left hurt and i know you want to be the one on top especially if you felt like you were hurt you want to get back to be on top i used to be like that like i have to be back on top i have to get you back i have to make you suffer before i can walk away with satisfaction Action. Like there's a lot of healing that comes with that. And I don't mean to be that person, but really transforming yourself and um, being in an intimate relationship with Christ. You find it more difficult to play those games with people or to even want to do the tit for tat and the hurt for hurt. But we are healing on this channel. That's not what we do. So, you know, next is Kino Escalation, which is eye contact. Nice guy in the sexually liberated guy act manipulators only looking for sex are usually not going to be direct about their agenda unless it's part of a specific script or tactic they're using to appear dominant they will instead dress up their intentions they will pretend they're interested in getting to know you even to the point of acting as if they want a relationship or can't wait to go on more dates with you some will even go as far as to degrade other manipulators and players as a form of grandstanding to make you believe they're one of the good guys pay attention to that when the guy's talking to you and then he starts to talk bad about his friends that may be players other people to make you to make himself say oh i don't do that i see guys do this but i don't trust me he's doing exactly what <laughs> he's doing exactly what he's quote unquote disgusted by don't fall for it don't fall for it the covert nice guy ploy is nothing new covert narcissists have been using it for decades underhandedly to misrepresent their intentions and character and to get what they want some will even go as far as to talk about how they're not interested in rushing things physically at all just to convince you that they are of enough sound character to sleep with right they'll try to show you oh, i'm not interested in intimate this so i'm not interested in moving too fast or doing anything like that but then when they get physically next to you their actions don't match their speech. Escalation and testing of boundaries. Pickup artists also use progressive touching or what is known as Kino escalation to get physical from the very beginning and gradually escalate sexually with their targets. They use selective touching in order to get their victims more progressively comfortable with them. For example, they may first touch your arm within minutes of meeting you. Assess your reaction and comfort level with that. Then move on to grazing your knee. This is not unlike the way in which a narcissist escalate with their victims by testing both the emotional and physical boundaries of their victims. These types may insert sexual jokes on the first date to assess your reaction. If you notice anything that makes you uncomfortable, whether it's a condescending or crude behavior, gesture or remark, act accordingly and detach from the person as soon as possible. Do not allow them to continue to detest you because they will continue to escalate. This is a tough lesson, especially if now you've already, this is why I say don't over romanticize people you talk to. Don't have a vision of how things will be in your head because then when you notice stuff like this it's harder to leave and i tell you i made those mistakes where it's like okay you're testing with certain jokes you're testing with you know the escalation and it may just start with like rubbing your thigh rubbing your leg touching you and stuff like that and then you're letting your guard down but you know it's a test because it's like this is not how the person was talking or how did it escalate from that but trust me 
the minute you spot it, because sometimes we spot it, our subconscious spot it, our intuition, we go pray about the situation and God shows us clearly that, uh, and then yet we stay because we've already gotten comfortable or we relaxed or we like the attention or we're, you know, best thing you can do is to leave that alone. Next is a predatory or seductive eye contact. Pickup artists are also taught the art of maintaining seductive eye contact to convey so-called alpha dominance. Predatory psychopaths and narcissists maintain such eye contact naturally, often without blinking or looking away and are said to have a reptilian gaze. Mm -hmm. Research has indicated that for one to feel increasingly close with someone all it takes are a few moments of intense eye contact and the disclosure of personal details prolonged eye contact also releases oxytocin the same love hormone that bonds mother and children pair eye contact with a sociopath's premature disclosure on dates and you've got yourself a recipe for toxic love like i like eye contact right but listen in the beginning i know it sounds crazy but you had to limit closeness like even if you're making eye contact with me sit a distance Ah, don't ever think you're so strong, powerful enough, or the worst mistake you can make, even as Christians, like my Christian girlies, we be feeling like we're so good in our walk with God, like where we've reached that pinnacle point of like, we're so right here with him and we're not going to fold. No one can get us to do things that we said we weren't going to do. I could play around and flirt around or he could just touch my leg a little bit or make a little eye contact, make a little joke. It's just that like I'm strong enough where I'm at that I'm not going to fold. I'm going to, you know, walk the line. It's not going to go that far. It's not going to escalate. Trust me, don't ever make that mistake. Don't ever make that mistake. It's best that you always have precautions and stay like Joseph. Flee if you have to. Run if you have to. Because I promise you, I promise you, you will reap a reward for that. And that reward will be heartbreak for you. Not the person because they already got what they wanted. They may pretend to be hurt. They're not. And, they, and even if after you've you know, the deed is done and all that and they stay around, they talk to you, but it's just for their own egos or because they probably think they can get another round from you. Or maybe if I see this person again, this and that could happen and they're keeping it around and you're thinking, no, maybe they're still interested. Maybe I wasn't played. Maybe you were played. You were played. You were played. You were played. Keep that distance. Don't fall for the eye contact and all of that. Okay. And then it's a sexually liberated guy act. Some pickup artists, especially more covert predators, also use the sexually liberated guy act to make their targets more psychologically comfortable with the idea of sex. While anyone can be a manipulator male or female this particular tactic is primarily used by narcissistic males preying on female victims because it works with gender stereotypes and social norms and this technique a male pickup artist wants to seduce a woman into bed he uses his awareness of what it's like to be a woman and the sexual double standards she's likely to have experience against her to do against her to do so so in a sense it's like he's giving you permission to like you know if you're a woman you're like oh i can't sleep with you on the first day or i can't do this da, da, da. he's like yeah i don't know why society puts this much pressure on women i feel you should women should be able to be just as free as men like they start to talk like that to give you this uh, false sense of security for you to feel to let go and to relax in their presence and to you know that sexually liberated you could be yourself with me i won't judge you like we all have needs we all make mistakes we all fall short of god's glory <laughs> i'm sorry that i'm laughing it's just you know they they will say whatever and then you you're like oh okay and you're becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of letting go in that regard <laughs> crazy also another way like i was reading the pickup artist guide and another thing they like to do is if he's seeing you for the first time before y'all go on a date or even if y'all know each other for a while and y'all just decided to start, you know, giving it a shot. Then he wants to twirl you around. Ooh, do the whole 360. Don't fall for that. It's to initiate touch, to get you to blush, to make you feel, you know, whatever. Oh, my goodness. And I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard out here. I'll say this. But in the midst of it being hard, like, I've had my share of heartbreaks. <laughs> and like I say, it can really change you and make you more tough a little bit more your eyes are open a little bit more and it's the same for guys there's guys that had the heartbreak and it really changes you for years and you have to undo the damage you're like dang how how could i 
done something like this or made this mistake? Where did I go wrong? What did I not see? Am I enough? Am I not enough? This and that. Like you think thoughts like that and it's a spiral, 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 spiral. And you start to really think that something is wrong with you. But if there's one thing that God has taught me, the strongest lesson that God has taught me in my lifetime is that you are always enough. I made you. I chose you since the womb. And it's not just a saying that. You are always enough. Know your value. Know your worth. You're just not for this person. You're not for this person. And I need you to not make this mistake again. Right? And if we follow his guidelines with dating, he's God is like this parent in heaven. Like if you have children and you're watching and you're done with this dating world, comment below. You know what I'm talking about. And if you have like nieces and nephews and, you know... I have a lot of youngins around me that, you know, you give an advice or going on their first little dates, etc. You want to protect them. You want to protect them from a lot of the heartbreaks that you've been through, a lot of the manipulation. And so in talking to them, they don't always want to listen. They want to experience for themselves. They don't necessarily want to take your advice. And I feel like we do that with God a lot. And then when they get their heartbreak over and over again, sometimes it's too late. They're already like trapped in a situation with a guy they didn't even really want to be in. They have you know a baby on the way etc same way guys some guys end up trapped with women because they didn't want to listen they wanted to rush they didn't want to do things the right way and then now you have to marry her because she's pregnant with your kids y'all stuck with each other for life because a child is for life or stuck in a fatal type of attraction because we don't listen and i feel like if we just listen to god we can prevent a lot of stuff and there's there's god will deal with don't think that people can just I say this, the worst thing you can do is break the heart of someone who prays to God continuously. Don't do that. Don't do that. You will just see stuff won't go right for you. It won't go right for you. You might not get it today. You might not get it tomorrow. But God always has their back. God always has his children's back that prays and that's genuine. That's the worst thing you can do. And some people really are monsters. They're evil out there and they make it a sport to do this. It's entertaining. They try to, they think, you know, these people are not souls. And yes, women that may, maybe they have mommy issues, daddy issues, whatever the issues, they prey on fragile women that they quote unquote label them as easy because of the way she's carrying herself. But you're not even trying to look at the psychology of why this young lady is moving in this way. Until they have daughters themselves, then they start to, you know, oh, they get all weird. Look at T.I. and his daughter. Look how he treated women. But then his daughter can't dare do this, do that or whatever but this was somebody else's daughter that was going through their insecure moment they're partying they're wild they're doing things that they will regret 10 to 15 years later when they think oh I did this at a party or I let this guy take me to a closet or I did this with another girl to seem cool in front of this guy we both was just trying this thing like a lot of stuff y'all don't know the stories that I hear that I deal with that even in the mentorship and all of that, it's crazy, you know? And these guys, they find pleasure in it. They don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. They go booster for them. And they don't understand that these are souls that God created, that he loves. He loves every person that God has made he love. It is not his desire that anyone should perish, but that all should have eternal life. So he is working on everyone. And if you don't treat the body of Christ, you cannot call yourself a man of God and you're moving like this. You're playing with people like this and you're not seeing it as a problem. It's entertainment to you to get another notch on your belt and to disrespect the heart of good people, to play with their intelligence, their emotion, because a lot of them will play with your intelligence and act like it was, it wasn't, this just sort of happened. This, da, 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 da. I wasn't intentional, this and that. Playing with your intelligence. But I say, leave everything to God, pray about it, and really just, let's just obey <laughs> what he put out there, okay? When he talks about you know, being intimate before marriage and stuff in the Bible, it's tough for a lot of people, but there's a reason why God says that. He's trying to preserve you. Those are soul ties. I'm up pin my soul ties video in the comments where you guys to go watch um it's soul ties are real 
And I, I speak about it from a scientific medical standpoint. And y'all know I'm going to come with receipts when it comes to science, when it comes to um, um, med- like physiology. Yeah, we talk about soul tie being real. It's not just a word that's thrown out like that. These are souls. Every person you lay with, you are connected with their souls. And y'all be laying with demons. Y'all be laying with people that's attached to several demons because they don't know how to keep their stuff in their pants and they go around praying. People, if you make the mistake, maybe you told your yourself i'll be celibate i'll be this i'll be that you made the mistake fine you know go cleanse yourself with prayer forgiveness from the lord pray about it and you know just i made a mistake but lord remove this soul tie from me free me from it because the soul tie will make you feel attached still to that person that you know don't want you like that don't like you like that don't want nothing with you but you're still stuck because it's a soul tie and i don't want to be a hypocrite and talk like it's all so easy because it's hard it's hard you still you might want to cut off the person, but you already attach yourself so much. Like you're stuck in the very thought of separation kind of hurts because you've already cleansed yourself before. And now you're like, you're like an empty vessel now that took in that person's spirit. And to just watch it mean nothing to the person, they can just move on and be like, well, I'm not interested in you or anything like that. That can hurt your ego. It could hurt you as a person. And you don't know what, but I'm telling you, never stop praying and just leave it to God. And let's just obey. <laughs> let's spare ourselves this type of hurt and obey. I'm not trying to Pre be preachy, but like, listen, every heartbreak I have had, I have brought on myself. It was my lack of obedience, me being led by the flesh and not by the spirit of God. I brought on those heartbreaks on myself. I can't blame nobody but myself. And I find that when I'm obedient, my heart is preserved. He preserves my heart. But when I'm disobedient and I choose to go my own way and be led by the flesh because of insecurities and being manipulated, God will show you manipulation before it even happens to you if you just trust him and you rely on him. Okay. Now, Second Timothy verse 2 verse 22 says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. When you're young, you have a lot of passion. You have a lot of hormones you can't control. you around. Maybe you've been in your corner. You haven't dated in so long. You haven't heard sweet nothings in your ear. And you finally decide to give a guy a chance, uh, a terrible, manipulative, using guy. And he's telling you cute stuff, holding you, touching you, being intimate with you to the point where your youthful passions are unlocked and you find yourself, you know, going to him. But like the Lord say, flee youthful passions and know that <laughs> there's going to be a time, it's going to be easier and easier to flee. But <sighs> I, I don't know. I wish I could. I, I just wish I could help everyone that's ever been in those type of situations to just see that your value because it all starts with your self-esteem and knowing your value also second corinthians 6 verse 14 says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness and unbelievers it, it be people it hurts more when it's people that are believers that believe in god that's in the same faith as you that's quote unquote a man or a woman of God, it hurts even more because you're like, I didn't become yoked with someone in the world, but it was someone within that broke my heart like this, that played me and manipulated me and used up my body and then just moved on like that. It wasn't someone outside, but it goes to the sanctity of, you know, preserving yourself and keeping yourself in the state until the person that God has for you makes an honest woman or honest man out of you. First Corinthians 13 verse 4 7 says love is patient and kind love does not envy or boast okay love does not rush that's what i get from patient and kind it does not rush you it will not rush into intimate conversations and keep going and keep going no matter how enticing it is and i'll tell you guys that a man that doesn't care to know anything about you but always want to talk sexual. You don't care to know what your favorite color is. What's your passions? What was some childhood traumas you overcame? What is what is the happiest memories you've had? What is your ideology on this subject? They're not supportive of anything you do. They don't care to know about your day to day. You know your family, this and that. They don't care about you, but they just want to talk intimately. That's it. Every conversation goes there. Why is that somebody that you want to give yourself to? Someone that doesn't even care to know you. Love is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. 
Mm. It is not irritable and resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. And then 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Like you could have good morals. Like you feel like you're in a, such a great place with God and you've had boundaries and limits for yourself and you're around bad manipulative company and your morals start to deplete. If you feel like the right person for you will not lead you to sin. Who God has for you will know if this is who God has for me or not because of where they're leading you morally. They will not lead you to sin. Who God has for you will lead you to Christ. That will be the focus. They'll but not be annoyed with you to be led to Christ. And they're going to take you serious. They're going to take you serious. And then 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 says, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin is sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against sins against his own body. You sin against your own body, yourself. God is protecting you from yourself when you indulge in sexual immorality. You're hurt. You feel used. You feel dried up. You feel played. You feel psycho. <laughs> once you're like stalking and chasing and doing crazy things to keep that love, them soul ties. You're sinning against yourself. That's why I say if you love yourself, you won't allow it. And even if you did in the past, listen, God is a redeemer. He can redeem you and let that be the past. I could go on and on. There's so many verses on this, but this video is, I'm looking at this already a little too long. Like I ended with my player blockers and I'll say share this video with someone that needs this video. Get your player blockers on and keep them on. And, you know, listen, we're not falling for the tricks. We're not falling for the tricks. We're not. We're not. And we're going to see clearly. <laughs> but share this video with someone who would need this video. Know that it's coming from a place of love. Love yourselves above all love God. And God will lead you to love yourself, to see your value, to appreciate you, how he made you. You are perfect. You are perfectly made fearfully and wonderfully made you are worthy you are valuable the right person is going to love you right it's going to be interested in you is going to cherish you you're going to be a diamond in their eye and they're not going to let you just be swooped up away by anybody like that they're going to want to lock it in and make sure the whole world knows that you are for me rib of my rib <laughs> bone of my bone okay so don't settle for less because what you want is out there so don't settle boo boo i got you okay I love you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Comment below your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.